Am I insane or what? Hey guys, in today's video I want to talk a bit about Gengar, one of my deadly most favorite characters to play. He's insanely fun. We were talking about the Dream Eater and Shadow Boy build, which is my favorite. I'm not a big fan of Hex and Sludge Bomb, even though it's also quite good and also got a decent buff in the last patch. In case you know, Dream Eater a while ago got buffed to where if you get a reset or you get a last hit on someone, you kill something, you kill an enemy Pokemon, it completely resets and you can go on again. For the build, we run choice specs, vice classes, and special specs. Yeah, it looks quite wonky, but all this build wants is to get the kill and get the next kill and get the next kill. If you don't get the reset and kill, you end up in your opponents and you will just die. So it's very important to get the reset. Special specs is quite bad, like it's very hard to stack on Gengar, but it can snowball games. If you get that Gengar where you get like a kill and you're able to score two or three times very fast in quick succession, cause you know, um, there were some points landing on the ground, it can snowball games quite hard, but don't try to focus on it too hard. And it will just come naturally, and either you get those stacks or not. Like you shouldn't, you shouldn't focus on them, but try if you can after a gank get them, and it can snowball games. And I'm just gonna go over some gameplay with you guys and explain the strengths, the weaknesses, and come to a conclusion on how good Gengar is actually in the current meta. All right, so let's look at me play some in Gengar, shall we? So what is the strength and weaknesses? The strength is insane burst damage, pretty long range abilities that can catch people off guard, and just an absolute like he just one shot squishies late game if you get to a decent level even not just early mid game and he can snowball team fights very very hard right like if you get that one reset and you jump onto the next guy you will see probably in this video a few times where how much the reset actually does and it's uh, one of the best changes they have done to dream eater so yeah jungle clear is quite slow we could also run master band over special specs if we want faster jungle clear but it becomes kind of useless at some point since we will not be auto attacking much in this build we will be pretty much using our boosted auto attacks and that's about it so yeah, because everything just dies anyways in your combo, so you will not be auto-attacking much, and you can't stay in auto-attacks in teamfights anyways. You can also run focus band over special specs if you want to. So level 5 Geng Gengar's quite bad. He does have Dream Eater, which can give him some good damage. Uh, Dream Eater also gives him two boosted auto-attacks, which does increase his damage quite a bit. But yeah, what is his weaknesses? So what I've noticed is the, the better the enemy team comp is, right, the worse Gengar gets, straight up. Like, Gengar is very good in these chaotic solo queue games where people pick whatever characters they want, but as soon as you play against stuff like Lucario, Wigglytuff team comps that are just, you know, very well thought of and uh, have good frontline and Adego support as well on the side, it becomes very, very rough. By the way, Dream Eater also resets Will-O-Wisp, so it's very important for Festa Clear to do, like, your Will-O-Wisps. You can do Dream Eater boosted auto attack. you can jump boosted auto attack and Will-O-Wisp again. I'm pretty sure I will hopefully do it here. So yeah, we do will wisp auto attack, and then... Actually, we didn't do one... We, okay, I was lazy. <laughs> I just jumped to the guy. So what you can do for early game clear is just you do will wisp Dream Eater, boosted auto attack, jump, boosted auto attack, and will wisp again. Here, I do it exactly. This is how you should be doing it. And this is for faster clear. Same for Shadow Boy. It works the same way. Dream Eater just makes the cooldown, reduces the cooldown of your other ability. And yeah, again. Hitting Dream Eater on someone gives you boosted auto attack, and jumping to the person also gives you boosted auto attack. Very important to know, especially to take down like tankier targets, um, just maximizing his damage output. Because his boosted auto attack actually does quite good damage, especially late game, when you have a lot of special attack. Since it does scale with special attack. And yeah, here we look for kills, sadly we missed it on him guy, we get this reset right there though, and then we get another kill. How you should play this build is you should really be you have to abuse vision you have to make people you have to make people face check into you this is one of the scenarios where i was like so happy you see all those grounds this could have been five stacks for me right um we get one two but sally my mama's swine pops up and it takes I, get, I still get three stacks and kills the goal as well which obviously killing the goal is very bad when you have a snake in lane right you should not be killing the goal i could have had five or six stacks um it was quite sad, but I'm still very happy that I still got some stacks. Here we blink, Dream Eater someone. Also, I still play, play Eject Button just because, you know, being able to Eject Button Dream Eater someone is very important. Dreadnought spawns in 5 seconds. I just want level 9 fast and take the red buff. But you can already see my damage now. I cannot one-shot these things. So, yeah. Um, I see the enemy doing Dreadnought, so I just decide to ult in. Ult is very good to get quick into a fight. Um, what I like to do is a Dream Eater and then jump on someone and then activate my ultimate like this. We get a reset, we jump on the Town of Flame, we get another reset. Shadow Boy is also reset, and yeah. So yeah, Dream Eater resets Shadow Boy's cooldown, so you do Shadow Boy, Dream Eater, Shadow Boy. You can also start with your Dream Eater. What I like to do is Dream Eater into Shadow Ball, into Jumping, into Shadow Ball. Like you, like, because I obviously want to hit the CC. If I hit my Dream Eater, it means I will also hit my first Shadow Boy, right? But hitting your Shadow Boy first also slows them, which means you can also hit in Dream Eater easier. So both ways are fine. But yeah, I like starting with Dream Eater, since the jumping to someone resets your cooldown. So yeah. And I'll be very strong already, we got another score in, so our special specs is very high. 
And now we would do insane damage. Only 1.3k damage on the Shadow Ball right there. So you, so you sleep this guy. I jump in and get another Shadow Ball. There you can see it right there. And now I'm at max stacks. Actually, I'm at 5 or 6, but it shouldn't matter much. Here again, Dream Eater, we Shadow Ball, jump Shadow Ball, put in some boosted auto attacks. Obviously, you can't juggle your boosted auto attacks perfectly. And yeah, it's very important to have good vision on this build. Here I said oh, I barely missed the kill on the uh, Gardevoir. His focus spin barely saved him. Could have been a triple kill otherwise. And yeah, you just want those, you just want to find those one shots on squishies, right? As much as you can. Here I see Talon Flame taking my entire jungle away, sadly. I uh, couldn't do much about it. I mean we, we got good kills out of it, right? So and yeah, this this plate is very skill shot reliant. So if you don't hit your skill shot, right, you, you're obviously going to be useless. Um so it does take a quite a lot of skill. Similar to like something like Future Sight, God of War, which is, you know, hit your abilities or lose. I mean, pretty straightforward, right, if you play a skill shot character. I mean, that's how it should be. But yeah, that's why he's also a pretty high skill cap character. He's very squishy, he dies very fast, and he's completely skill shot reliant. Right now, yeah, he, the Pikachu walks into me. Try to catch him. So what I like doing is Dream Eater, jump to someone, and then use my activate my ultimate. But sadly, the ultimate has such low range sometimes. Here I get chased, but I still vision on them. They try to chase into me, we get one reset, do the same thing again. Shadow Ball, Dream Eater, Shadow Ball, and yeah, we get two quick hits. So, try to combo your ultimate damage with your Dream Eater jumping. But yeah, the, the ultimate, I really wish they make the ultimate a bit bigger, because it's sometimes very really hard to hit, even though my Dream Eater is right on top of them, I still can't really hit it. But that's like the best way to assassinate someone, is, uh, you know, combining it together. Let me take our jungle fast again. And we run to reach level 13. Level 13, we get Shadow Boy Plus. In case you're not, Dream Eater Plus and Shadow Boy Plus are straight up damage, more damage, which is all Ginga wants, right? Just more damage. He's a complete glass cannon, melee assassin, and or ranged melee assassin, I guess. And yeah, all your goal is just getting kills. So those are quite nice to get kills. We get another reset. We use our next Dream Eater on the next person, jump again. And yeah, it's actually it's so fun to play. Like if you have never played this build, I recommend you trying it at least once if you get the feeling for it. It's such an insanely fun build. Dream Eater is actually a very good last hit for objectives. It does quite a lot of damage. And yeah, you can use it to like last hit Dreadnoughts or Rotoms or even Zepdos. So how good do I think is Gengar actually? He, he still is outclassed by quite a lot of other junglers, right? Like Cinderace, Greninja, which are currently the meta. Just outshine him. Oh, here we get... Uh, yeah, these are like... The, he has very long range. So this is how you want to do it. You want to abuse vision. You want to stay far away and then just look for these one-shots from far away, sadly. I mean, yeah, still got his ultimate, which is almost as good as killing him, right? Even though it's Talon Flame, his ult is going to be up any second now. But yeah, he's. I would say, say he's like a B-tier character. He's insanely fun to play and feels very really strong sometimes. And obviously, when like, wow, look at these one-shots, but... They don't always happen, and late game team fights are very hard to play when everyone pops their ultimates, have buddy barriers, are very fast, it's very hard to hit skill shots. It's very hard to one-shot someone, right? Because they're, I mean, buddy barriers, everyone has a buddy barrier sheet around them, which means you will not be able to one-shot anyone. So, it's very important for Gengar going to late game to find a pick-off. So you want to kind of camp in brushes, and just hope you're one of, the, like a squishy, like a Pikachu or something runs into you. But even Pikachu is an issue to kill sometimes, which I think is going to come up in a second. People like Pikachu always have ultimate up, and it's pretty much like like a best better focus spent. I do miss my Dream Eater here. It's here I miss it on skill shot, and I'm instantly just gone. But okay, this Pikachu used this Unite move right 40 seconds before Zapdos. So on the initial Zapdos fight, it won't be up, so I can look for him again if I really want to. And yeah. So yeah, we miss one skill shot, and this is like, oh, hmm. yeah, I guess, I guess it might be over. Now we just get ready for Zapdos. I mean, I guess we reset our death timer a bit, you know, it could be worse. And Stash 1 packs Gengar, I, don't, I just don't know. I feel like on controller it's just very hard to maneuver it fast. I think on, on, on phone it's quite good. Here we see Town of Flame capping bot lane, but he has gold getters, so I probably won't be able to catch him. We can maybe still look for a kill. I do miss both of my abilities again. Sadly with them a bit, but uh, he still sticks around. Dodges my Dream Eater. I think I hit him one more time here. He's literally 1 HP right now, but uses ultimate. That's also pretty good already. He's pretty much out of the fight. And yeah, he we missed another skill shot again. Um, Gardevoir just ultimates because he doesn't know. Like, I think he just wanted to proc Buddy Barrier so he doesn't die to me. Here we finally hit our Dream Eater. Jump onto Trevin and use it to go on the Gardevoir. He blinks away. Another Dream Eater weaving in our boosted auto attacks. I did miss quite a few skill shots in this fight, so you can see nothing is really dying. But now we just, uh, yeah, we see our team fight and our team on top lane. Two of them are dead. So I'm just going to start Zapdos. The enemy slowly moves into us. And after this, I'm just going to walk out of vision and just try to find picks. But I see the enemy moving in on top up there, and uh, 
Yes, the God of War. Boop. Kill him. Use the reset. Jump on the Pikachu. Instantly Dream Eater him. Sally, our Shadow Boy, is slightly with us, but it's still fine. Talon Flame, 1 HP. And you just see our damage, right? Look at this. Bum. Half HP. One Dream Eater is half of his HP. <laughs> so if you actually hit those skill shots, it's quite insane. Um, then we get Zapdos. I mean, this was pretty... Yeah, was not that scary of a, of, like, of a coin flip, right? The Mystical Fire Sylveon should not be able to steal the Zapdos away unless he gets an auto attack or something in. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much the game, right? That's the game. That's the end of the game. Let me sh just go further a bit. And again, it's one of my most favorite builds, but like even I can't have a big win rate on it. It's just very volatile of a character. Again, if the enemies have a good team comp, it's very hard to play. But we did end the game on 116,000 damage. Probably was one of my better Gengar games as well. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you want to try out Gengar yourself, then feel free to. But don't be scared. Like uh, He's very difficult to play. So uh, be ready for it and try to hit your Dream Eaters. All right, guys. See you in the next one. Bye.